William Hopefully your favorite videographer from Two Hats Publishing. I welcome you to another Two Hats special of community events. Let's look in and see what's really happening. This is why I'm here
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the feast of victory for Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. May God bless your congregation. We're reading the word from Acts 4. The next day the ruler, the elders, and the scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Ananias and his high priest, Candace, John and Alexander, and all were of high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, of what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the peoples and elders, if we are questioned today because of good deeds done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the peoples of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God risen from the dead, this Jesus is. The stone that was rejected by you, the builder, it was became the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, but there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. We read in response. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You restore my soul, O oh Lord, and guide me along the right path for your name's sake. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Second reading, 1 John 3. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his, laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God love abide in anyone who has the world goods and see a brother or sister in need and yet refuse to help? Mm -hmm. Little children, 
Let us love, not in words or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we know that we are from the truth and will reassure our heart before him. Whenever our heart condemns us, for God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandment and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of the Son of Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandment abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that we abide, he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please rise as we prepare to receive the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to John, the tenth chapter. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. So we start with our first lesson from the, the reading from Acts, that fourth chapter. And what has happened is Peter has been out there and after his amazing preaching on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit is being made known through mighty acts and especially through healing. And of course this has stirred up the religious leaders and the, the powers that be. And so they've gathered them together and they've uh, kind of arrested Peter and they say they want to know, you know, what's going on here? By what power and in whose name did you do this? They're not thanking God. They're not giving praise to God who does things, amazing things, like raise Jesus from the dead and give the apostles the power to heal. No, they just want to know, yeah, by whose authority are you doing this? Because we're the authorities around here. And uh, Peter says, it's in the name of Jesus Christ. And he says, let everyone here know that that's the name by which these things are done. And he says, and there's no other name under heaven or earth that has this power. And then we have the 23rd Psalm where the shepherd is named. The Lord is my shepherd. 
So by what name are we led? By the name of the shepherd. And then we have our gospel lesson. And it says, I am the good shepherd. Throughout the whole entirety of the Bible and all of our Judeo-Christian faith, all the way back to the, the beginning of scripture time, the image of the shepherd has just been imprinted on us. It's part of who we are. It's been stamped on our thinking. And in our scripture text for this morning, Jesus again taps into that imagery. And all the good Jews would have known and related to this. They understood about what the prophets had said about good shepherds and about faithless shepherds. And so he, when he refers to himself as the good shepherd, they understand what he's talking about. Now it's a small wonder that the image of the shepherd was frequently on Jesus' lips because it was so much a part of the heritage and the culture. Think about it. Abraham, the father of the Jewish nation, was the keeper of great flocks. That's how he was described. And what was Moses doing when he got the word from God? He was out tending the flocks of his father-in-law Jethro. Moses was a shepherd in more ways than one. And when God called Moses into special service, he called him from a task that they understood. David was what? He was a shepherd boy. And when he came to his anointing, he wasn't there among all the other brothers because he was the least and the youngest. But they said, no, bring him in from the fields. And they said, but he's only a shepherd boy, and yet he became their greatest king. So we understand this thing about shepherds. And so the imagery of the shepherd is also part of the Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, so I shall not want for anything. He, make, excuse me, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me. He leadeth me beside still waters. When the prophet Isaiah spoke of the coming Messiah, he worded it by saying, He will feed his flock like a shepherd, and he will gather his lambs into his arms. The tradition of the shepherd, Jesus Christ understood very well, and that's why he chose it. You might remember that Jesus told a parable about another good shepherd who had a flock of a hundred sheep, but one of them wandered off in this parable. And the shepherd, instead of being what we might consider a good steward, and you know, 99% safety returns pretty good, but no, because of his great love and commitment, he went after the one lamb, the one sheep that, go, that went astray. And later when Jesus was speaking to a great crowd of people, the evangelist Mark tells us that he looked upon them and he had compassion because he understood that they were like sheep without a shepherd. In other words, they didn't have a clue who they belonged to, where they were going, where they were headed, how they were going to get there, whether it would be a green pasture or a dry desert. So when Jesus tells us he's the good shepherd, he's taking up all that imagery and symbolism and calling to mind in his listeners all that it meant to be a shepherd. And the point of this is that, listen, disciples, we all need someone to lead us and guide us, Amen. someone to protect us, Sometimes someone to protect us even from ourselves. So what makes for a good shepherd? And it's interesting that the word is good, not outstanding, superlative, excellent, because those are all human qualitatives. But the word good translated here is something more. It's more like the all committed shepherd. The shepherd who is of the truest ens essence of shepherding. So these are divine attributes. We're not talking about the, uh, you know, he's a B minus on a scale of A through F. No. And so to be a good shepherd might be a little bit different than what we think it means. Oh, we all love to see that picture 
of Jesus with the shepherd's staff in one hand, cradling the fluffy, white, cute little lamb in his other arm. But why do you think a shepherd carries a staff and a rod? They don't use them just on the wolves, you know. Sometimes they have to push and pull the sheep. Because as we said, sometimes we're like sheep without a shepherd. Even when the shepherd's there, we've lost the sound of his voice and we wander off and we get stuck. We get stuck in the brambles or we stumble down the hill and we get tripped up. Yeah, sometimes they have to push and pull the sheep, those shepherds, in order to get them where they need to be, away from dangers and temptations and toward a place of safety and good grazing. And the reality of our life as sheep, we, we're all sheep, bah, right? We're all sheep, is, is that sometimes the voice and the call of our Lord, our shepherd, gets hidden. There's so many other voices out there clamoring so loudly for our attention and shouting over us that we lose that voice and it gets hidden in a chorus of those worldly voices, all of which beckon us. Other would-be shepherds seek to tempt us away from the good shepherd, away from the joy of his nourishing forgiveness and the security of his self-sacrificing love. And you know, when we are weak and confused, we may fall victim to the voices of false shepherds because we're vulnerable. And we may think we hear him, but we might be following a false shepherd who will lead us to places we were never meant to go. I read a story about an American tourist who was traveling in the Middle East and uh, he came upon place with several shepherds whose flocks had intermingled while they were drinking from a well. Now this is one part of Israel and Palestine that still looks very much like it did back then. You can get out there and it's a dry desert and every now and then there are these stone wells or these places and you will see, see shepherds leading, sometimes pushing, their flocks back and forth across the roads and you have to stop the bus or whatever you're in will have to stop and you got to wait till the sheep go by and then they're going to go where they're going to go and sometimes there's more than one so here he was and there were a bunch of sheep and flocks and several different shepherds and so of course the tourists want to get out and take pictures we want to see an authentic you know holy land sheep and shepherd so after an exchange of greetings one of the shepherds turns toward the sheep and he calls out mana mana and they do it in a kind of a bleeding voice like that and mana means follow me in Arabic. And immediately his sheep separated themselves out from the other sheep that were there and followed this particular shepherd. And then one of the two remaining shepherds that were over there, he calls out, Mana! Mana! And his sheep pull out from the rest and they follow him. And so the guy that was taking the pictures, the tourist, he says, Man, I'd like to try that. He said, can I borrow your cloak and your turban? And, and if I call out, maybe they'll follow me. Well, of course, the shepherd just stood there like, mm, okay. It'll make a good photo op anyway, right? So the shepherd smiled knowingly as the traveler wrapped himself in the cloak and put the turban on his head and he called out, Mana! Mana! And guess what? Nothing, Nothing happened. Those sheep did not move. They stayed right there at the well. Nothing happened. Not one of them moved toward him. And the reason, of course, is that they knew their shepherd by his voice from years of listening. They had learned to follow only him and no other voice. Even if a false shepherd comes and he says the right words, and he wears all the right garments. That doesn't mean he's the good shepherd. The voice of that man was not that of the true shepherd. Let those with ears hear. Amen. And then the man asked the real shepherd, he says, so will the sheep ever follow someone other than you? Oh yes, the shepherd replied, sometimes. 
Sometimes a sheep gets sick, and then it will follow anyone. They can be tempted away, and a sick sheep will follow. Well, we've seen that, haven't we? We've seen it even in ourselves, fellow sheep. When we are tired, when we're sick, when we're stressed out and stretched thin, battered by the storms of life, and distracted by all those voices clamoring, everybody wanting and needing something, or promising something, or selling something, or trying to convince us of something. Yeah, all those voices urging us to go this way and that way. And we're vulnerable. And we're in danger of becoming lost. Because sometimes we wander and we miss hearing the shepherd's voice. And you know, when we find ourselves in that place, that can be more than a little frightening. And it can lead to despair and to hopelessness. And we also know that fear leads to anger. And when we get anger, angry, when we get really frightened or really angry, brain scientists tell us that we literally our vision closes in on us and we become, we have tunnel vision. So now not only can we not hear the shepherd clearly, we can't see our way. And when someone is that vulnerable, they might follow anyone who will promise a moment of happiness or a brief feeling of peace or forgetfulness, or comfort, or security. Or maybe just someone that will tell them that what they want to hear, a sense that they are important. Oh yes, <laughs> we know that there are many false shepherds out there. Not all of them are pastors. We're not talking about that. There are plenty of false shepherds out there, and some of them live on Wall Street and some of them live on Madison Avenue and some of them live in Hollywood and some of them live in Washington DC or Austin Texas there are many false shepherds out there they're the ones that Jesus warns us of when he says be careful they're nothing more than hired hands maybe they got the vote maybe they got the authority maybe they got the money Maybe they have the right words and they may look the part. But they're false shepherds and hired hands. And hired hands were never really shepherds at all. Beloved of the Lord, all of you who we hear are fellow sheep of the Savior's flock, hear the good news. You know it. You know your shepherd's voice. You know how to tune it in. Prayer, worship, scripture, confession, and then more prayer, scripture, worship, and confession. That's how we hear our shepherd's voice. And the call of Jesus, the good shepherd, that's the real thing. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And there is no better way, no greater truth, and no truer life. Our risen Lord reaches out to us in love that is stronger even than death. That's what Easter is about. That's what the resurrection is about. The fulfillment of the incarnation of a God who loves his creation so much that he became one of us sheep. It says, like a lamb, he was led to the slaughter. He became the sacrificial lamb, that lamb of God, so that he could rise from the dead and be our eternal shepherd. Love stronger even than death, so that we might follow him. And then he leads us on our way, because we're supposed to be out there seeking other sheep. We're supposed to be out there seeking those lost sheep. 
and all the lost ones as we go. Just as Jesus said, there are other sheep of mine that are out there. And it is my will that we be one flock with one shepherd. So, fellow sheep, bye. The question we have to always be asking ourselves, day by day, sometimes moment by moment, as long as we're sheep, whose voice are we following? Amen. 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 Please rise for our hymn of the day, which is Have No Fear, Little Flock. Number 476 in your green hymnal. with thankful hearts tuning our ears to hear the voice of our good shepherd let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 7 in your bulletin we believe in one God the Father the Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Can we have Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, sorry. oh, I'm so sorry. I just went right over it. That's fine. <laughs> so sorry. So sorry. Thank you. 
good shepherd. The good shepherd laid down his life for me. When we hear that, we look at Jesus on our window here. You see him, the good shepherd. So let me ask you something. At first I said I was gonna tell this story, but then I decided I would let you tell the story. Who knows the story of the three little pigs? You, you know, I love that story. In this story, the mother pig sent her three little pigs out into the world to, for their future. Now, what did the first little pig make his house out of? Straws, and then what happened? The wolf came, and what did he do? He, he knocked on the door, and he said, little pig, little pig, let me in. Then what did he say? Not by the hair of my then what happened? He said, a huff and a puff. Okay. Amen. And then what happened? He huffed and he puffed and he what? Mm, Play doh. Play doh. Mm. So he blew the and so what did that pig do? To his second brother house. Then what happened? Come on, what happened? Little pig, little pig, let me in. And he said, and then what? Huff, and he huffed, and he blew the house down. Now, what happened next? The two pigs went to the third brother's house. And what happened? Well, what kind of house did he have? A brick house. And then what happened? Little pig, little pig, let me in and let me. Not by the hands of my titty, titty, titty. You know, I'll huff, huff, and I'll blow the house down. And did he? No. He did? What happened? The brick was too strong. Too strong. And then what happened? He climbed up the chimney and they had a boiling pot of water. Ooh, that was small. <laughs> <laughs> and so once he got the chimney, the boiling pot of water, they cooked them alive. Then what did they sing? Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? How'd that go? Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? The big bad wolf. Y'all know that one? Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Nah, 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 nah. So they didn't get it. So you know, there's a many stories written about the wolf. Uh, I know you know the story of Little Red Riding Hood, Peter and the Wolf. I know you know the story about the boy who cried wolf. Yep. The boy who cried wolf. They and, he kept lying. Yeah. Okay. But let me tell you something. Why are we talking about the wolf? We already know. Did you know that Jesus once told a story about a big bad wolf? In his story, Jesus told about the good shepherd, that Jesus was at the hired hand, that I, that the, uh, the flock of the sheep, that's us. And then the wolf is who? Satan. And this is the story of the good shepherd. Pastor already told us about it. I am the good shepherd, said Jesus. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run away and when he sees the wolf coming. But the good shepherd will lay his life down. When the hired hand run away, the wolf will attack the sheep and they will scatter. I am the good shepherd. I, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. You heard Pastor tell the story. Just as the Father know me, I know the Father. And I will lay down my life for the sheep. Now Jesus is the good shepherd. I want you to remember that. And we are the sheep. We know he knows his sheep and he loves us. He will protect us when Satan tried to harm us. When we put our trust in the good shepherd, say the good shepherd, good, good shepherd. shepherd, we can say, who's afraid of the big bad wolf, the big bad wolf? We're not afraid because we know Jesus will protect us. Let's, let's bow our heads in prayer. Let's bow your head in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son to be our good shepherd. He gives his life for us and he helps us to follow him. And we trust him to protect us 
from the evil one, which is Satan. We say this in Jesus' name, amen. your sheep and guide them in their serving. We pray for church custodians, office managers, Sunday school teachers, confirmation leaders, baptismal sponsors, deacons, pastors, youth workers, and bishops. Lord, in your mercy. Restore natural environments damaged by our hands. We pray for river valleys and grassy plains, coral reefs and arctic ice mountains, deserts, and marshlands. Lord, in your mercy. Protect and guide first responders. Bring mercy and justice with their presence. We pray for military personnel, firefighters, paramedics, and police officers, and for disaster relief and crisis intervention teams. Lord, in your mercy. Heal and renew all who ache for a better tomorrow. We pray for the unemployed and underemployed, the forgotten, the nameless, and the outcast, for our enemies and for our loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. Give to all who are restless, reckless, or uncertain the peace you promise that is deeper and richer than anything we can imagine. We pray for all who live with chronic pain, who live with anxiety, and who are ill or hospitalized, especially Glendale Anderson, Rosie Barge, Doris Billups, Lula Cleveland, Samantha Castillo, Charlene Fuller, Dexter Fuller, Zerlene Fuller, Rosie Henderson, Helen Jackson, Tommy Jackson, Emma Jones, Marie Olivier and her mother, Angela Perkis, Mary Smith, for the life and ministry of my Olive Lutheran Church, for the leaders of our congregation, our Pastor Deb, and for our bishops, Eric and Liz, for the volunteers and those whom we serve in our food pantry, for all of those first responders and military who serve to protect our freedom, and those who we now name aloud. testimony of all the disciples who have gone before us. We give thanks for the faithful departed and their witness in every age. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We entrust all our prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them by the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And also with you.
sorry, we're having a peace moment up here. <laughs> Continue our worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings to the glory of God.
Thank you. Thank you. Please rise as you are able. Mary, the mother of our Lord, 
with all the elders and ancestors of your people, and with all your children. And you, our prayer, prayer of the long distant past, you, ancient word, spoken by the Father, you, breath of the Spirit, prayer of the ancestors, you are spoken now. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Come now and let us feast this Easter day on Christ, the bread of heaven. Hallelujah.
Please rise as you are able. Now may these precious gifts of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us, keep us, and unite us in his will, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction. Please rise as you're able. Now may God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. And Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Amen. And our closing hymn is He Leadeth Me, number 501 in your green hymnal.
hopefully your favorite videographer from Two Hats Publishing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please leave comments below or like, follow, or subscribe to us and get notices of all our videos. We love it even when you call. <laughs>